man, I'm 37. When I was 21, having sex with a girl was perhaps a victory. One, because I was young and less accomplished. And two, because women were harder to have sex with. Nowadays, if you have any semblance of money at all, having sex with women is basically impossible to not do. You, I, I go out to get my mail and accidentally it happens. They're just everywhere and they're begging. It's ridiculous. Especially if you have money because women do not want jobs anymore. They'll do anything to not work. Anything they'll say they love you, they'll do it all. Anything to not work. I get thousands of love letters a day from women. Me, who's trapped in Romania with a human trafficking case. Yeah, the, the, the amount of female attention I get has probably tripled since I've been labeled a human trafficker by the media. You know? Nice. Well, I don't really believe that, but Great you know, for the human but, trafficking business. But I, but I like a bad boy. If I wanted to human traffic, now's the time to start. They're all interested in coming now. Keep an eye. In one corner, we have Andrew Tate, the internet's bad boy and kickboxing champ turned contentious influencer. The legendary music mogul Diddy, who's as famous for his beats as his brushes with the law. We're diving deep into their stories, so buckle up. It's gonna get bumpy. And then Diddy just got caught trafficking girls and pe and pe he's a pedophile. No. <laughs> How many unique positions to comment on this, John? <laughs> you know, let me tell you something, Aiden. Something else, some more life advice for you. Being a horny will get you in trouble. In general, let's forget Diddy in his case and whatever it goes in court of law, innocent, guilty, that's up for him. He's gonna work it all out. If you spent any time on the edges of internet lately, You've probably stumbled across the name Andrew Tate, but who is he really? <laughs> Someone has to f***ing flip the burgers, dumbass! Andrew Tate's life reads like a script from a Hollywood movie, spanning from elite sports to reality TV and into the murky waters of internet fame. So losing my dad was obviously unfortunate, but my father was a very, uh, it's hard to explain my dad and his personality, but he, he, t he talked about dying a lot even before he had any kind of health issues. It was just something that was not like a taboo subject for him. He, he spoke about it quite often. So when he died, like I became paternal. I wanted children. I didn't really want kids before that. When he died, I kind of thought I need to, yeah, speak my opinion more and teach what I know about life. And it's just, it's an unfortunate part of life, but it's the natural order of things. It's how it's supposed to go. I mean, it would be far more devastating for me to die before him. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult to even tell stories of him. Just being around him all the time. I remember whenever I was around him, I was kind of on, on eggshells all the time because it was very easy to get on the... He, he was always... He was very... He was constantly correcting, like, all of the time. And people think that, as a, like, in a bad way. But I really do like to say that my father was one of the smartest people who's ever lived. And I say this, and I'm not just saying it because I'm his son. I've been around a bunch of smart people. I've been around a bunch of millionaires. I'm rich now. Blah, 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 blah. I'm telling you, my dad was a different level of intellect. Andrew started as a professional kickboxer. He was a champion. His press in the ring won him multiple world titles, cementing his status as a top-tier athlete. I've got a world title fight coming up. Um, I'm already four-time world champion. I'm out here training in Thailand, and Kieran Kettle knows that, and he's asked me to come and spar with Idris. My fighting style is very relaxed, very elusive, uh, low defense for optimum attack. I like to fight as a counter striker. I like my opponent to swing, miss, um, and whenever they make a mistake uh, and they're left open, I like to punish them especially to the body. You can go huh? with me and oh, I'm off. That's my team captain. Now. You've said enough. Go. Yeah. Good, I'm good. Go, go, go out, man. We're not fighting each other. Yeah, I can't fight it. you. It's hey, not don't but his thirst for the spotlight didn't stop there. He leaped from the physical combats of the ring to the psychological battleground of reality TV, appearing on the UK's version of Big Brother in 2016. However, his stint was cut short. I'm telling you what I've seen. You came into here and we just called eight of us snakes. You didn't even tell us your name. Tate was removed from the show due to controversies surrounding comments he made online. Um, so you're on Big, you, you're on Big Brother yeah. and um, you got pulled out. out yeah kicked yeah. off um because of the sex video because you no. just talked oh uh, that's not why i kicked off here's okay. the real reason i kicked off. okay so that video that girl from the sex video there's actually been if you google andrew tate's girlfriend there's been articles since where she's gone to the papers and said that was all fake so that's the first thing so everyone goes you're a woman beer well the girl herself's come out and said it's fake and then everyone goes you paid her to say that so you can't you can't please these trolls so i don't even bother yeah. refuting it anymore um, i'm still good friends with her i was with her yesterday so mm -hmm. and this is like two three years ago mm -hmm. so we're still good friends anyway the real reason I got kicked out of Big Brother is because I was too good at triggering everyone. 
So what happened was I was only in there for about nine days and four people walked out and every single man in there at some point had threatened me with violence. So they took me into the diary room and they said, we're really concerned about the dynamic of the house. This is all off camera. Yeah, yeah. I was like, well, you, well the rules of Big Brother, we all signed a contract saying no one's allowed to make threats. I'm not threatening anybody. All these people are threatening me. You need to shut down their threats. I'm like, yeah, but people, you know, you're very controlled and they're more emotional and we just want to guarantee that in the event of an altercation, you won't hit anybody. Following his reality TV, Tate didn't retreat from the public eye. Instead, he doubled down, leveraging his notoriety to build what he calls an empire. This empire isn't built on bricks and mortar, but on digital ventures and a very visible online presence. You cannot stop. You cannot give up. You're in the most fantastic place on the planet for making money, Hustlers University, and the only person who can ruin that is you. Most of you are happy to be losers part-time. You want to escape. That's why you joined. You don't want to be a loser anymore. But then that new video game comes out. Ah, I'll just play the video game. I'll just be a loser for two more weeks. Then I'll get back to trying to escape the matrix. It doesn't work that way because you jump in and out of complacency from I'm happy to be a loser and do loser things to I can't be a loser anymore. And when you jump in and out, you never get momentum. You cannot quit. You cannot give up. You need that momentum to break free. When a rocket is flying out towards the moon to escape the atmosphere, it doesn't fucking pause halfway up the sky, does it? No, it keeps going. Every single second you're not in Hustlers University, there are things happening, conversations happening that you're not watching, information. That could be the one little piece of information you need to break out. It could be that one little sentence that changes everything. You're in Hustlers University and you're gonna make money, but it ain't easy. It ain't gonna be given to you on a plate. You're gonna have to work. You're in competition with the entire world. Everyone wants to escape. You cannot be lazy. Every single spare second you have needs to be dedicated towards Hustlers University. No more video games, no more loser antics. From online casinos to self-help courses that promise wealth and masculine empowerment, Tate has diversified his offerings, each reflecting his unapologetic, no-holds-barred persona. But not everyone's buying what he's selling. When I first joined Hustleversity, I thought it's gotta be different, right? To have this many people paying every month they have to have things that you just can't learn for free, right? Wrong. Once again, I'm disappointed because I joined this month and have been going through the classes, which is basically all of the same boring topics all of these guys teach about making money. It's all the most surface level stuff. He assigns a so-called professor to each skill. And all of this all takes place inside of Discord servers. So in these chat rooms where your instructors have a fraction of the charisma of Tate, you're supposed to commit yourself to these skill sets, which are super surface level, because of course, this all appeals to the lowest common denominator men who think answers can come from TikTok videos. For many, his brand is polarizing, seen as a playbook of toxic masculinity. The allegations against him are severe and many, ranging from coercion to racketeering. These aren't just minor legal skirmishes. They are serious accusations that hint at a dark, undoubtedly beneath the glossy exterior of fast cars and freedom-filled rhetoric. The details, as they emerge, paint a troubling picture of manipulation and control, leveraging power for unsavory ends. I would like to say a massive thank you to all the supporters we have around the world, regardless of what the mainstream media keeps saying and the lies they try and purport, we get tens of thousands of messages from people every single day supporting us, and they understand that we're not the first affluent, wealthy men who have been unfairly attacked. In our, in our situation, unfortunately, it happens quite often. I want to thank the whole world for all the support we get. I also want to give a very special thanks to Romania and the Romanian people. The number of Romanian people who send me messages of support is absolutely fantastic. This is my home. I love this country. I'm going to stay here regardless, no matter what. And I look forward to being found innocent in the end of everything. So thank you all very much. Which is absolutely absurd, simply for the reasons that it's absolutely false. I have lived with Andrew for years and years. And he would never do anything like this, ever. I've already had to make two videos regarding his innocence when it came to him being called the woman beater or a video that got leaked of us two having a, a little bit of a rough role play. I had to make a video clarify, two videos in fact, clarifying that he is innocent. And then here I am again, coming from somebody who lived with him for years. He is not a human trafficker. He would never rape anybody, and he would certainly never ever human traffic anyone either, including his brother. They would never do such thing. I am just so shocked, and I am so fed up with all of these lies. 
talking about it, that he's a woman beater, that he's a human trafficker, he's, he's raped somebody. It is so false. It's so false that it's upsetting. Even though we're no longer together, it upsets me because I know the person I have lived with. I know who he is. And he is neither of those things and he does not deserve any of this coming his way. Currently, Ted is embroiled in legal battles, vehemently denying the accusations and fighting to clear his name. Online, debates rage about the nature of his empire and the ethics of his advice. Supporters rally behind his claims of being targeted for his controversial views. Do you think he has the say to speak of Diddy? Now, let's see what's his relation with Diddy. And Diddy is the boy of Harlem. From making music scenes to making his own label, Bad Boy Entertainment didn't just make hits, he made history. Shaping the careers of giants like Notorious Big and Mary J. Blige and defining the sound of a generation. But Diddy's ambition stretched far beyond the bounds of music. His golden touch turned to fashion with the launch of Sean John, a brand that won him a CFDA award and became a staple in streetwear. His ventures into the world of spirits with Ciroc Vodka transformed an underperforming brand into a behemoth through savvy marketing and an unmistakable flair for trendsetting. Each move solidified his status not just as a musician, but as a visionary entrepreneur whose influence permeates music, fashion, television, and business. The legal battles often stem from the complexities of music rights, contractual disagreements, or more personal disputes. After all this, people started comparing the similarities between Tate and Diddy, showing how their situations are alike. For example, Trevor Bettis said, Diddy starts talking about God and now that the Matrix is against him like they were Andrew Tate last year, or that they themselves are alike. Andrew Tate is like Diddy for streamers. They will go after Andrew Tate, but P. Diddy is free, Epstein clients are free, and others are against Tate and his fans. Andrew Tate fans are cool with all the Diddy jokes, which are funny, don't get me wrong, but don't like it when you mention Andrew Tate was literally charged with human trafficking. The difference in media treatment highlights how narrative framing can sway public perception, turning it into a potent form of unofficial justice. This disparity sometimes leads to public verdict that is vastly different from the actual legal outcomes, influencing everything from career trajectories to personal relationships. Matrix is strong. The system which is designed to keep you as a slave is strong. How could it exist any other way? Because there's very few of them and there's a lot of you. The system is extremely strong and it's designed to keep most of the people at the bottom slaving away, praying to have money they're never going to have so that those at the top can stay filthy, filthy rich. To attack a system like this, you need to wait for an opportunity. There has to be a chink in the armor. Something has to happen which the Matrix has not prepared itself for. So there's an opportunity for the masses, for people at the bottom, for the shit munchers to break through and become ultra high net worth individuals as I have. If you cannot feel in the air, if you have half a brain, you should feel it in the air. You should feel it when you wake up. You should feel it when you look around you that the world is not the same as it was. Yeah, that's just the beginning of this crap, right? The world is not the same as it, as it was. Things have happened this year and last year which will never ever happen again. And the financial system, the judicial system, the immigration systems, all the systems of earth which func function in a particular way have broken down because society no longer functioned in a way it was supposed to function. The matrix is weak now. You have an opportunity now to make more money than you've ever had in your entire life. You understand inflation is coming. You understand fiat currency is no longer valuable. You've been told to just buy crypto because this is your limited understanding of the fiscal landscape. And that's not a bad move, but there is so much more you could do. You need to start preparing for the impending fiscal doom, which will bestow most of the average people of Earth. Most Joe Schmoes of Earth are waiting. They don't know what they're waiting for, but I'll say what they're waiting for. They're waiting to be crushed. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive into the choppy waters of celebrity controversies. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell because you don't want to miss what we uncover next. Stay curious.